building the buy box. It's defining your investment criteria. You need to know the location that you want to buy in, the unit counts, and the budget that you have that you can tap into in order to go and acquire a property. If you're a residential real estate agent earning $200,000 a year and you want to grow your passive income, this show's for you. Learn the secrets other agents use and hear from experts in our field in order to guide you along your journey to investing in assets like apartment communities so that you can turn your commissions into cash flow. I'm Randall DeCleared. Let's go, baby. All right. Welcome back. It's great to have you here today. I am kicking off a series now about real estate multifamily deal going full cycle. So I'm glad you're here for this. I want to walk through the process from acquisition, management, close, and just talk about the each steps in the process to give you a better idea of how they work and how they operate. And then we will conclude the series. So hopefully you will have an idea along each step of things that you can pull on and ways that you can go out and start looking for some of these deals yourself. Or it'll give you a better understanding as to why it's time consuming and difficult to do on your own. And you should invest with guys like us who just go out and do it all the time. As always, if you're getting a value out of the show, then please jump on, rate, and review. If you would like to watch the show, watch the guest interactions that I have with other people, we have it on YouTube. And you can go to YouTube, and our show is at Agents Building Cash Flow. Another thing that we've started doing is Instagram. I really love Instagram because it is short, poppy. We're able to get some content out there very quickly in 30 seconds or less. So we've got those shorts going on. And we've had some good feedback on some of those things. So jump on Instagram. You can find it. I believe it's Randall McCleared is on there. And you can search for all of the content that we're putting out there as well. So let's go ahead and jump into it. And I want to show you exactly how and why multifamily. So let's go. Okay. So we talk about a lot, right? Why multifamily and why class B and some of the things that we're looking for. So the reason I like multifamily is because being in real estate for a long time, dealing with tenants for a long time on a single family front, I have gotten to know dealing with tenants. I've understood that business. People always need a place to live. And so to me, it's a very recession resistant type of asset that you can buy. And as long as you manage it the right way, then you're going to know that you're going to have some stable, consistent cash flows coming in based on the way you bought it and what you've done to the property. So I really like it for the security and the stability. Really, that's one of the main reasons, right? The other side of it is the tax benefits. So right now we're looking at selling a property and we'd have a large tax bill on that property. As through 1031, I can roll that profit and that sale into a multifamily asset, reduce my earnings because I'm going to do cost segregation on the property. So I'm going to reduce the earnings that I had, the tax bill, while also deferring the $100,000 tax bill that we would have just from the sale of the other property. So we have $100,000 extra to work with, plus any other income that I earned outside of the sale of this property that we're 1031 ing I now get to reduce that income based on the acquisition of a new property. It's a massive gain in deployable capital along with tax savings. So we can talk through all of that as well. The other reason with multifamily, it's economies of scale. The ones and twos, when you're knocking out these properties and you just have these small units that you're dealing with tenant one-on-one all the time, you can make money through those. But if your property goes vacant, then you're 100% vacant on that one asset, right? And you're dealing with most of it, at least we are, because we are professional real estate investors, professional real estate companies. So we are dealing with it ourselves. You may not, you may have a property manager, but that property manager is going to reduce your cash flow on that property. So we like multifamily assets because again, you can go get third-party management. Their fee essentially is built into the deal and you know that you can hire X number of people to be on site and they can manage that property for you. So it becomes a little bit more passive, not hundred percent passive unless you're investing with somebody like us, but a little more passive, right? And then obviously we like the fact that you can exponentially grow the value of the property based on small incremental changes that increase your NOI. So it's either reducing your expenses or increasing the income through rents. So those are all the reasons we like multifamily. Now, knowing all of that, let's jump into the first step. This is, again, we're taking a deal. We're going to go full cycle. And I want to show you guys what it takes to go out and buy some apartments. Okay. So on today's episode, we're just going to cover the basics, which obviously when you're going out and you want to buy something, you need to figure out what it is that you want to buy. So the very first step in your investing journey, and I've harped on this a number of times, it's looking at your goals, looking at what you're trying to accomplish, and then building a buy box around that, right? So knowing your goals and knowing what you want, you build your buy box, right? That's step one. Okay. So building the buy box, it's defining your investment criteria. 
You need to know the location that you want to buy in, the unit count, and the budget that you have or that you think you can tap into in order to go and acquire a property. And what I mean by that is you may have $100,000 to put to work yourself, but you have a few friends who said they would invest with you and you may be able to go out and have $400,000 or $500,000 in equity that'll buy you a bigger property that you can partner with these people to go buy. So again, it just depends on what it is you're looking for and the ability you have to execute on that sort of strategy. So let's assume that you put together a buy box that says we have half a million dollars to invest and we want to do it in our backyard so that we can go and look at the property and that will guide your ability to purchase or know what sort of property size you can go and acquire. So half a million dollars, if you're getting 50% leverage or 65% leverage, you're at one to $1.2 million on the purchase price that you're able to go and buy. That makes it pretty easy for you then to go and say, what's in that price point? What's from 800,000 up to 2 million? Because maybe you look at these $2 million properties, maybe one's sitting on the market for a long time and you can make a lower offer that gets in your buy box. Always give yourself a bit of a window. You may see a great $800,000 property that comes up. So you don't need all the equity that you have access to. And it's cash flowing better than something at 1.2. Just those are basically how it works. Give yourself that leeway and that spread on either side. So the next thing you're going to need is a lead source, essentially. So again, depending on what your investment criteria are, if you are looking for something small, then you could typically either go on your local MLS for a fourplex or less, or you can start by going on to like Crexy dot com or loopnet or some of these public commercial listings that you can go and just look at these sites and see those things that are listed. The smaller it is, the easier it is for you to potentially go direct to seller as well. And so if you are looking to be full-time and active, then it's a great strategy to get direct to seller because then you have an ability to communicate with them and find out what their needs are, find out exactly what they're looking for. And you don't have the barrier of a broker who's just trying to make a sale and be almost like a shield between you and making a deal happen. Not always that way. I'm just saying it's easier to communicate direct to seller most of the time to get a better deal because you're solving a problem that you're able to uncover direct with them. So again, depending on the size of the deal, typically on a 30 unit plus, those are mostly handled by brokers. Our 50 unit up, yeah, mostly handled by brokers. And they tend to be owned by LLCs, not individuals. So it may be harder to find the ownership and get direct contact with them if you're trying to reach out to them directly. Sending letters to wherever their PO box is or their corporate address, you certainly can do that. I just know that a lot of them won't respond, but it's worth a shot if you were doing it. All right. So let's say you now have your buy box. You now know where you're going to start getting some leads from, and you now need to have the ability to quickly sift through the rubbish and the deals, right? And so once you have your buy box set up, one of the things you need to be doing is talking to lenders to understand really the financing options that you're going to have for the type of asset that you have decided that you're going for. Again, it's going to be a little bit different if it's a sub $1 million loan compared to a $10 million loan, right? So you need to go out and find out what the rates are going to be and the types of debt products you have for those types of acquisitions. So we'll dive into that. I'll get into that on a different episode. We could talk all about financing. If you go back to an episode I had John Brixon on the show, he is with McKinney Realty Capital. I think that's his name. And we talk all about the financing options for large multifamily complexes. So just knowing it'll help you with your due diligence because that's the next step. You're going to be seeing these properties and you need a quick way to identify what's good and what's not. Just like I said, the rubbish in the good from the bad. One of the easiest ways to do that is to look at the net operating income of the property and divide that by the purchase price. That's the cap rate. It's a very simplistic, very quick way to analyze a property and see what it's trading at, but varies so much from market to market what things are trading for. That's not the best indicator, but it's just a very quick one that will give you an idea. A couple other things to track if you're looking at deals, because a lot of times it's going to take you a hundred deals to look at before you get a deal or more, right? And so if you're tracking over time, like this property, 123 Main Street came out, it was trading for $5 million 
which equates to $100,000 a door. And it was trading at $100 a square foot. Those are some other metrics that you can throw into the mix to see if it's in line or if it's overpriced, if it's lower than most of the other stuff that you've seen. Again, that's very simplistic because markets vary. Even in San Antonio, they vary so much from the north side to the south side, to the east side to the west side. So just take all of that into account, but you can do it very quickly if you just throw it into an Excel spreadsheet and you just track that for all the deals that you're looking at. All right. So we covered today the buy box, getting set up, understanding your goals, talking to lenders and figuring out the financing side of things and really starting just the search because that's where it starts and quickly underwriting deals. We can dive into underwriting in a full episode because that in itself is something that takes quite a bit of time and skill to learn how to do. So we have discussed on this episode the first steps that you need to take when you're going out and you're looking for an apartment. One, obviously, identify your goals, understand what you're looking for, what you have to work with, talk to lenders, understand how much money you can get, the types of loans that they're offering for the type of asset that you have the ability to purchase, and then really going out and actually starting the search, doing an underwriting. So next week, we're going to talk about underwriting in more detail. And I'll show you some things. I have a calculator. If you guys want to download it, then we can share that. And that'll be in the show notes next week. And then we'll keep going with the series as well. So it was great having you on today. I look forward to continuing this conversation over the next few weeks about taking an apartment full cycle and what that looks like. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Surprisingly, most of the agents we speak with got into real estate hoping to gain passive income and become work optional. However, only one in five ever start investing. Most are simply too afraid to start. Once you get educated by listening to this show, you'll be able to overcome that fear and become the one in five who are finding financial freedom. Don't miss a single episode. If you want to stay up to date, the best way is to make sure you're subscribed. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and do it now. And we'll catch you on the next episode.